Good afternoon, everybody. Or morning. Or morning, if you're Carl. <laughs> um, Nicole, could you just confirm that you're seeing, you see me sharing my slide? No, I am, it's not shared. I'm not. Okay, okay. let me get that shared. And then we'll go ahead and get started. All righty. So, <clears throat> Carl and I have a particular viewpoint on retirement, and it is um, different than the way that your grandparents retired and the way that your parents retired. And we think it's a more uh, 21st century view of, of the world. And so that's what we're going to present to you today. Um, and that's sort of what the, uh, the self-employment to what's next as self-employed people. Um, our lives are different. So um, there's no reason why the final third of our life isn't going to be different either. So, Carl, are you ready to go? Absolutely. All right, let's let's do this. Um, now, we do have to tell you a little bit about our vendor sponsors. Um, this is a webinar by the National Society of IT Service Providers, which we hope that you are all members. And if not, that you'll go over to nsitsp.org and join. And we have these wonderful list of vendor partners that have joined us as well. So if you are looking for vendors that care about the state of our industry, the ethics of our industry, and the professionalism of our industry, these are folks that you want to do business with. You can find them on our website as well. <clears throat> so we want you to become a company member, and this is, I'm highlighting this membership in particular because it's one that we just recently added. We started off the organization with professional membership, meaning you as an individual can join, and now we've created a company membership where your whole company can join um, and be recognized as a uh, higher level of, you know, group or a company in the, in the industry. Um, and there's some awesome benefits to this in a very small incremental cost so that all of your employees can become members and get themselves on the path to more professionalism as well. So I wanted to highlight that. If you're not a member yet, please join. Go over to nsitsp.org and take care of that right now. So here's our agenda today. We're going to talk about how <laughs> retirement is and what what the old view of it is. We've got to talk a little bit about money. We're not going to dwell on it because you've got financial advisors for that, but the lifestyle and working or whatever and what we're going to do. And so my name is Amy Babinchak. Um, I own thirdtier.net and um, we do a bunch of things over there. We've got some peer groups going. We do do a little bit of technical support, business consulting, um, speaking, got some courses coming up, some peer groups, go over and take a look at what it is that, uh, that we're doing. And I like to be a busy person. So when I'm not doing that, I do this. I do, I sail, I um, boat, I garden, I photography. I'm the president of the association. Um, I do all sorts of things. I have an endless number of things that, that interest me. And um, that's going to help me out through the, the my whole lifespan. And I'm Carl Polachek. So I'm the founder of the National Society. And um, also, I've been uh, involved in this community <laughs> since, I guess, be, since before it was a community. Um, so for about 30 years, I've been working in small business and IT consulting and so forth. And I'm also the author of several books, including Relax, Focus, Succeed and Manage Services in a Month. Um, so I'm very happy to be here. So Carl has written more than a dozen books, but he chose to focus on this particular one for a reason, <laughs> because it's about life and the rest of his books are about managing your business. Um, so pay special, special attention to that one. Um, it's a, it's a really good book. Well, and those who know me know this is my favorite book, even though it, uh, it's never really taken off the way I'd like it to. So those who have read it are in the, in the know. All right. So a few statistics, because we need to know, we need to know where we are. So, um, in 2019, 
the average age of retirement in the US was 55.4. If you are older than 55.4, we might be, uh, you might be behind schedule. Um, and I just realized that I have the Australia slide deck up. We'll have to wing it, Carl. I'm sorry. Carl and I All gave right. this presentation in, in Australia recently. The numbers are slightly different for the U.S. We're retiring just a little bit later than, than 55. Yeah, so the U.S., the current number is 61 <clears throat> years. Uh, of uh, so the, the U.S. is quite dramatic. Um, it's It's kind of sad that we're, you know, six years behind what another first world nation is. And there might be some reasons for that. Um, we also have a, a lifespan. And again, in the US, we're not doing as well as Australia. In the US, it's 73 for men and 79 for women. Um, but we still have a gap to fill. It means that between retirement and your expected lifespan, you have a bunch of years um, that you you have to fill with something. And um, to the neighborhood of 25 to 30 years. Uh, and that's that's a long time, right? That's a probably pretty darn close to the amount of time that you've spent in the, the working world as a as a professional. So um, we're going to talk about three different kinds of things you need on the money side. Um, and uh, it, it actually, Amy, it's probably worth it if you can find the other slide deck to bring it up while I'm chatting, you know. Um, the, I'll do the, that. You know, most of us have in the U.S. Social Security, maybe a 401k, uh, your savings and so forth. Um, and so, you know, that's tr traditionally how retirement's been funded, but Things have really been shaken up in the last, you know, 20 years, this decade. Um, so, you know, what, what we're here to talk about is the emotional side. So however you've taken care of the finances, whether you've you've uh, decided to buy uh, another business or sell another business, or uh, we were joking yesterday, go work at Walmart as a greeter, you know, that's, that is something you need to think about. But at some point... Uh, two things are going to happen. One is you will leave your business. And another one is you will pass away. And so there's this gap between, <laughs> you know, uh, leaving your business and passing away that that's kind of what we want to focus on is, um, you know, for most of you, uh, it'll be a nice, pleasant transition, but you will have quite a bit of time to think about what your life looks like and where you're going and so forth. Um, and, you know, uh, Amy, uh, will tell her story. Um, and let, let me see, maybe I can share my version of this. I've got it. I've got it here, Carl. It? Let okay. me just, uh, I just have to get the, uh, the, so, the share going again. Yeah. Sorry guys. Just a moment. That's all right. Um, so you no matter how many times you practice. I, I'm telling you, you know, Carl and I up. did give this presentation recently in Australia, and so, um, so we we had to look up the stuff for them, and then of course, I have two slide decks. So here we go. All and right. Was, yeah, there we go. I was on the there next. There we go. Yeah. All right, so we do need to get dark for a moment though. So retirement is a loss and loss can be dangerous, right? Did you know that a person is 40% more likely to suffer a heart attack or stroke after they retire? It's because loss is actually hard. So um, I have a personal example of this. So for me, I haven't actually retired yet, but I did make a big step in that direction by selling my own MSP last month. And that was my, my largest business. Um, and, and I actually experienced a loss by selling that company. Or at the table, signing the thing and the money's transferring to my bank account. And you would think you'd be elated and you kind of are, right? The person across the table from you is feeling overwhelmed because they just bought a business. <laughs> they have to figure out how to run. And you're feeling like, like happy that you made money, but also like, oh, I just sold my cat. 
right? <laughs> it's kind of like, it's a personal, it's a very personal thing, right? I spent 23 years growing this thing and now I'm selling it to somebody. Um, so those, you know, it made me feel good at, um, but also I don't have that same routine in my life of greeting my employees every morning at the, at the water cooler. Um, and so, you know, I've got a little bit of loss of friendship going on, a loss of routine and all that kind of, kind of adds up. So, so when you retire, um, it's not all a happy moment. You have to have a plan in place for what it is that you're, that you're going to do next. Um, now I'm an optimistic person. I'm a happy person, so I'm definitely getting over it. Um, but being resilient is really a big part of this final, final third of your life. So when people tire, retire, the vision can be very different from, from the reality, right? If you stop entirely all at once, um, then you're going to have some, some worries and you will have that, that level of loss and that, that loss is real. So you really should anticipate that and figure out how you're going to, how you're going to manage that in your life and have that be part of your plan. We're lucky that as business owners, we have lots of options. You know, your friends who are not self-employed, uh, they got a W-2 and, you know, they got their pension is on one side and, you know, they may or may not have stuck aside enough money, but they're not going to go, probably not going to go create a business in their 60s, right? Um, so, you know, how we use the term retirement has definitely changed over time. Last year, I went to my class reunion at Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington, and I was 62, and almost everybody there was 62, and that's the magic age in the United States where you're theoretically eligible to start collecting Social Security, and it never occurred to me <laughs> to start collecting Social Security. Uh, the penalties are too high and blah, 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 but lots and lots of my friends who were by definition college educated uh, were retiring. And I asked them like, what, what, what's going on? What, what, why are you doing this? And one person was a very successful doctor who said, look, this is an opportunity for me to disband the partnership, uh, go into business on my own, work a lot less and uh, you know, have income, but just basically morph into a different lifestyle. Another person said, look, I've been working for other people forever, and now it's time for me to be a professional artist, right? They all had a different story, and retirement did not, for any of them, mean that they were going to sit on their back porch and, uh, you know, hold a uh, uh, water hose out and water the garden for the rest of their life, right? They have something planned, something to do. Many of them have hobbies. One literally wanted to just go golf three quarters of the time. So, you know, we have options and we no longer have to say, well, it's work, 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 stop. Uh, that's no longer the way the world works. So I have a life philosophy, which I have called retire a little bit every day. And this was something that, that came to me because I grew up at the tail end of a, a generation. My parents were the youngest of their siblings, which were all large families. And my parents had children later in life. By the time that I was a young adult, all of my aunts and uncles were retired and my grandparents were gone. So I, had, I have cousins that are as old as my friends' aunts and uncles. Right? I grew up with old people just all around me. And uniformly, they all told me the same thing go out, have fun, don't wait, don't be overly concerned about money. And so, um, and by that, they meant, you know, go have fun while you're young, do it now. And so I, I took that to heart, right? Don't wait for retirement. And this caused me to form, form that life philosophy, which is, you know, the retire a little bit every day. And to me, this means that I will take all of my vacation time. I will own a sailboat. I will travel. I will engage in hobbies and I will choose to do something fun whenever the opportunity arises. But I will also work hard to make sure that I can do all of those things and make it happen. 
So the result is I may not have as much money in the bank when I get to those final days of retirement, but I will have had a, a very full life along, along the way. So what's my job now? Um, your job now uh, as you move toward retirement is to stay healthy, keep working, maybe with a new plan, and have fun. By all means, have lots of fun. They, um, one of the other major influences in my, in my, in my life was um, a book that I read early on called Your Money or Your Life. And it goes into a lot of detail about, you know, a philosophy of you should keep track of how much, much total money you made in your life and how much you have set aside and, and what's the difference in, uh, you know, the difference is some big gigantic number that you spent and probably don't realize that you spent, but the gist of it is really the title, right? If you have to make a choice, that, that typical, you know, old Western stick up thing, right? Someone sticks a gun to your back and, you know, this is a stick up, your money or your life everyone will give away their money and take their life. And so uh, your life is the most important thing to you and you need to invest in that just as you in invest in, in making sure that you do a good job in your work. So on the finance scene, you got to figure out the most basic thing, which is how much money do you have and how fast do you burn it, right? This is not, <laughs> this is no different than what you've been doing for the last 30 years. It's just where the money comes from and where it sits uh, is going to change. Uh, so, And the, the way that I always think about this is however much money you make is how much money you will spend. So the trick is to know in advance how much that's going to be. Right? I recently... Uh, because of my business sale, I met with two different financial advisors uh, and I wanted to compare their recommendations because I never used a financial advisor before and I was having some trust issues. So I wanted to see what it was that they, they were telling me to do. Um, and both of them asked me the question, how long do I think I'm going to live, right? As the starting point for, you know, building out what my income is going to look like. Um, and gosh, I have no idea how long I'm going to live. So you have to pick some long number that's longer than you think it's going to be. Um, but they also asked me how much money I think I'm going to need every year. And, uh, and then the third thing they asked was, what big purchases do I think I'm going to make, right? Is there a big trip? Is there a new boat in my future? Is there a second home in my future? What are, what are these big things? And put that all, put that all into the plan. Ultimately, my answer is um, I wanted to have about as much money as I have now because my life is already structured around having that built-in fund and, and retirement. So what I'm spending today is probably what I'm going to spend into the future. Many people make the mistake of thinking that, oh, after they retire, they won't need as much money as they do today. That's probably not true. Um, anyway, I don't want to have to change my life significantly. Most people don't want to change their life significantly after they after they retire. So you do have to think about about finances. So one of the things you need to do is to figure out the insurance piece. Uh, and you know, I encourage everybody to do an insurance audit. Um, at some point, you will no longer need business insurance. And if you're going to sell it, well, that's obvious. But at some point, if your business isn't worth anything and your retirement is secure from um, being sued or whatever, um, you need to just think about it. It needs to be part of the equation that you consider from time to time. Uh, you also need to consider how your end of life care is going to be paid for um and what that looks like or might look like and obviously it's like amy was just saying they you know they ask you these questions how long are you going to live and what are you going to die from well you know i mean i can speculate but um, <laughs> i've outlived uh you know my warranty significantly so you know i'm just uh, going day to day um but do you need private hospital coverage do you need you know non-medical coverage like dental and vision and physical therapy right and also, uh, do you need to have life insurance if you have no kids or dependents who rely on you, right? Who, who, why would you pay for something to replace your income 
if uh, you don't care who gets it, <laughs> right? So I'm not saying that you need to make the same decisions I would make or Amy would make, but think about these things and, you know, spend a little time on it. You don't have to spend a lot of time on it. A lot of people don't like to spend time on these things, but you should do some kind of audit of what the revenue and insurance gap sort of looks like in your life. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I know a lot of people my own age, and I will tell you that um, many people would retire if they could figure out the insurance question. Health insurance is a, is a big problem in our country. And as far as I can tell, a lot of people are making their decisions based on how are they going to continue to have health insurance until Medicare kicks in at 65. So um, definitely that is a number one, number one uh, concern of everybody in this age group. So, you know, you need to have some kind of strategy. And, you know, this, this is absolutely not a webinar on uh, exit strategies and so forth, but you do need to have something in, in mind. Will you pass it on to your kids? Uh, will you merge with somebody? Will you close the door and walk away? Sadly, that is the most common way that small businesses end in the America is that people literally walk away. And it shouldn't be that way because you have yeah. built some value. But, in, you know, your kids may not want to partake in your business. Uh, nobody may want to buy it, you know. So what are you going to do? What's the plan? And, um, you know, the, the sooner you make the plan, the better. It's better to have 20 years worth of planning before you turn 65 or 68 um, than it is to have three years of planning, right? So uh, what are your options and what do they look like? Uh, one option is to, you know, continue working in it, but no longer be the boss, you know? So well, you have lots and lots of options today that you didn't have before. So as a person that does a little bit of, of m and consulting, um, I would say that, you know, you should make a plan to sell your business someday. You've spent a lot of years um, working that business, it does have some value. And so my personal thought is that you should gather that value through a sale. And then if you want to still continue to do something to create a new business and, and go and do that, right? But gather that value that you have. Because like Carl said, sadly, most people tend to just let it dwindle away because they didn't have a plan. They didn't think about it. They didn't think it had value. Every business that's been in business for 20 years has value. Um, you get, get that in, get that value in, into your retirement account. It'll be, it'll be worth it. It does take about three years of planning for you to get ready to sell and get that sale happening in your business. So don't wait to last minute for that either. Start thinking about it now. So this is the important part for me. <clears throat> There's lots of people who will help you with the finance side and the insurance and getting all of that figured out. But the lifestyle is the important part. And, you know, I, in 2011, I wrote down, I want to write more. I want to speak more. I want to travel more. And I redesigned my business and my life. So that's what I get to do. And I'm a firm believer every single person can figure out what they want their future to look like and make it happen. And so um, I, in some sense, <laughs> that's part of why we put this together in the first place is this is one area where even though Amy and I disagree on everything, we agree on this. We do. Um, and sometimes you hear that whole lifestyle business thing as a negative term. I have never considered it to be negative because... If your business is not providing you the lifestyle that you want, then you will do something to change your business, which is what Carl just, just described. Knowing what you want and then going after that thing, that's what we do as entrepreneurs. So um, when we're talking about ending our working life cycle, we wanna make choices about how we actually want to, to live going forward. And you know, I have often told people if you're in small business, your business exists to support your goals and dreams. If you work for Intel or HP or Microsoft, uh, your goal is to maximize value of the company for the stockholders. 
but when you're in small business, your business exists to make your dreams come true. So you got to figure out how you're going to make that happen. Yep. Um, one thing to think about is housing. Do you have too much house? Many people, if you've raised kids, when you know, you got a few extra bedrooms, uh, do you actually want to live there? Do you want to live in another country? Do you want to live in another city, another neighborhood? Um, you know, that, think about what your future lifestyle looks like. Um, is your house, is your current city where you want to do that? You know, we have all heard about all these people who retire from Michigan and move to Florida because the weather is good. Um, but, you know, you may want to move to Iceland because that's your idea of good weather or something else. So, uh, but it's worth, it's worth making plans. Don't just say, oh, someday, because you don't know when someday is going to come. I feel like I hear of a lot of people moving to Montana these days, like that's the, the place where folks are going to. But, you know, I, I do have a small house. I, I chose my house um, back in 2007, so quite a way, way ago, but with the forethought that it was small, it's on one level. They're just two people living it, right? Small house, small problems, small house, small, small expenses. Um, you know, that was for me, I didn't, didn't need to invest in a large house. Um, one of the things that's kind of a misnomer though, is that many people do not actually downsize. They think that they will, um, and then they end up not doing it because they've gotten used to the neighborhood that they live in the, you know, they like everything about where they live now. So even though it's, it's too much house, um, they don't tend to go back down to a, a smaller house. Um, so think about that. If you're going to keep the house that you're in, um, how does it, how does it fit? What's it actually, what's it actually going to cost you? So I also consider, uh, that you should have a lifestyle audit, uh, which by which I mean, what are your hobbies? If you're not going to go to the office and you're not going to spend time there, you know, what are you going to do? How will you spend your hours? Um, are you somebody who putters around the house and fixes little things? Uh, do you need the structure that your office gave you? Um, you know, uh, several people in the comments mentioned, hey, I'm not going to retire or, you know, I've got a plan for something. Um, your plan has to include what you want to do. Uh, you know, I've had a friend who uh, told me this many years ago that he wanted to try golf. And I said, what do you mean try golf? And he said, well, I think I want to golf when I retire, but I've never golfed and I don't know if I'll like it. <laughs> so, so don't be suddenly, you know, retired and go, oh, now what should I do? Right. Start building hobbies, building a life outside your business. In general, it's good for your mental health anyway to have a complete, well-rounded life. And also, Steve and other folks are talking about, um, you know, getting involved in a charity. There's a billion charities. And, you know, uh, there's also a lot of programs specifically for old people where, where you won't be uh, out of your element. You'll be working with people your own age. So, again, this is one of those things that the sooner you start building a well-rounded life, the sooner you'll have one. And I think most of the people who die suddenly after retiring uh, don't have anything else to do. I think that's really true. Um, when I've seen people that have struggled after retiring and it, they weren't business owners, they were people that worked and then stopped, you know, then like the next day they had nowhere to go. Um, and in that case, I saw really saw people struggling with forming a new structure for their day, right? Nothing forced them to get up in the morning. Nothing told them they had to be somewhere at a particular time and start and stop in that whole routine, just like, just like ended. And it was really hard on them mentally. So definitely ease into it because like the slide says, you can't become a new person overnight. Um, and I, I have had people tell me that they would never retire because they have no hobbies. Um, and I just, I mean, I have loads of hobbies, so it's hard for me to relate to somebody not having hobbies, but, but I understand why this happens, right? Your um, people that have children are, you know, involved with what their kids are doing. And um, there's not much time for the hobby between running your business and, and dealing with, dealing with your kids. But at some point, 
the kids move out and the business winds down and you need to be, you need to be you, right? You got to figure out who you are. Um, but really what we're talking about here is you don't have to stop working. And I see loads of comments, which we'll get to um, at the end. So thank you all for popping those in there. Um, but in today's day and age, you don't have to stop working. We have so many opportunities um, for what, what options really for what we, what, we can, what we can do in the future. So we're gonna do work or we're gonna do something. Um, there's, like I mentioned, loads and loads of options. So gig work is real big. And in fact, I think probably 20% of all the uh, Uber and Lyft drivers I come across are people who are retired or, you know, they, they are semi-retired, right? This is their extra job. Um, some people start little businesses or they start uh, nonprofits or, you know, they do something. Um, and there's so much stuff now. I mean, if you are good with anything, you got a hobby where you make stuff, you might be selling it on Etsy, right? You literally have more options today than anybody <laughs> has had in the history of the world. Uh, so it's really a great time to be, um, you know, thinking about what's next, whatever comes after this current incarnation of yourself. I think the gig economy is an amazing opportunity to be able to to do a little bit of work and have a little bit of structure in your life and get out and socialize with people. Um, but even some traditional jobs, like uh, my father had a friend who was a General Motors engineer. And when he retired, he worked at the local garden center in the springtime when it was their busy season and they needed extra folks because he liked plants and he wanted to know more about plants. And when you work at the garden center, you get to be around other people that like plants. Um, and so he really enjoyed that. And I actually have a neighbor that is a retired telco agent. And um, he just took a job at the hospital as the guy that pushes you around from place to place when you're in the hospital. He gets his steps in. He has a little bit of, um, he just does it a couple days a week, right? He has a little bit of uh, structure in his life. He doesn't mind getting up at 6 a.m. for those shifts. And uh, he gets to chat with people along along the way. So it's a it's a social endeavor for him, and it's healthy for him. And it's not you know it's not a brain power thing, but it's just a really sort of a, a fun activity. And he gets a little paycheck at the end of the day. So variety is the the spice to life, right? It does, it brings meaning to your life, your hobbies, your pets, your activities, um, keeps your brain active. I see a couple people in there saying that they're not going to retire because their brain would would atrophy away, <laughs> which it's a right. that's a real thing, right? You do, your brain does need to be need to be active. And it, it could be active through work or it could be active through hobbies. But your brain, your brain needs activity as much as as much as your body does. So reinvention is a thing. Retirement doesn't mean stopping. It just means doing things differently. It requires that you that you do have a plan. And we really do have more options than ever. This is a white paper that I uh, wrote for a, a company vision service plan a few years ago. And so if you're interested, uh, go check that out. Um, and I also have a handout I created just for this presentation. Uh, so uh, feel free to go to that QR code. I promise there's no viruses that I put up there. So uh, anyway, <laughs> but um, the, so this, I've got a little handout on some of the stuff we've got here. Plus we're going to have these, uh, this presentation available if you want to look at it again. Uh, but the bottom line is, you know, think about, all the pieces of your life and too many business owners don't think about the personal side you know as amy alluded to you go through the period where you're raising kids and now you've got 18 years of bad habits of spending all of your time either on the kids or on work then the kids go away to college or whatever and suddenly uh, you have nothing but work and you know one of the somewhat humorous intended to be humorous things that you see in movies a lot is that one person retires and the spouse says 
get out of the house. I can't stand being with you 24 seven. You have to go do something that is real. Um, so, you know, make sure you, you plan uh, your, your last piece of your life with intention. Yeah. It's also very likely that your work life and the end of your parental life means that you've obliterated your friends group, <laughs> right? And, you know, as, as young people, we have school friends, we have college friends, you have work friends, you have the friends of your children's, you know, your parents of your children's friends. Um, and then all of a sudden, those are all gone. So that's another really important reason for developing hobbies is humans are social creatures. So you do have to get out there. You have to make an effort out at building a new friends group that's going to carry you through this, this next phase of life. So that is it for most of our slides. We're going to go ahead and take some questions. Before we do that, though, I do want to tell you about our next webinar coming up at NSITSP. We're really doing a lot of um, very interesting um, things that you're not seeing in, in other venues. And our next webinar up is um, how AI is revolutionizing customer service. Um, our marketing committee has been doing a whole series on, on AI and its impact to, uh, to the IT service provider industry and the impact to work in general. So if you're not up to speed in AI and all of its various uh, incarnations, formats, and impacts, that whole series is something that, that you should get, get involved in. And you'll find these things over on our, our website on the events, events tab, so you can get signed up. So let's take some of those uh, questions and take a look at the discussion that's been going on. I'm, the q and is my, honestly, my absolute favorite part of every webinar. Um, so I'm so happy that you guys have been chatting wildly in here. I see like 30 or something. It's uh, fantastic. And Terry and Josh have their hands up as well. I don't see hands. So, oh. wow. so I'm a, maybe because I'm sharing my slide, I'm going to go ahead and, and stop sharing, I think, because you've all have figured out how to get in contact with Carl and I from now on. All right. And I am grateful for the turnout because uh, I do think that this is a kind of topic that uh, a lot of people like, I don't know if anybody else is even covering this, but it's important. Question, do you recommend being proactive about teaching, about reaching out to old friends? Uh, well, I mean, on a personal level, I'm a big fan of that. That's, uh, you know, I know Facebook is, is for old people these days, but guess what? Uh, if you're thinking about retirement, you're an old person. So um, it's a great place to reach out to old friends and reconnect and just, you know, say, hey, you know, push the reset button. A lot of people wouldn't necessarily go back and choose all the friends they had in high school. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as an adult, you've learned to, to, to grow your own friends anyway. So why not reach back to the few people in high school that you still want to be in touch with? I think it's absolutely worthwhile. Um, so I do see the raised hands now. Larry, you've got your hand up if you, Larry Doyle, if you have a, a question you wanted to jump in on, um, please do. Uh, Lynn says, my husband and I have met with financial planners to drop a plan for how much money we have and how, how much we will need. Highly recommend this step. So Larry Harbison says he's never going to retire. He watched his father's mind degenerate after he retired. It was an awful experience to watch. Um, yeah, you know, we, we mentioned that it's, uh, it, is, it is a real thing. Um, you'll see so many of these uh, stupid phone games advertise themselves as, you know, brain activities to, to keep yourself smarter. And there's a little bit to that, you know, they've overdone it on the marketing for sure. Um, but that's a real thing too. That, that's a reason, that's a reason to, to keep everything going. And Other Steve, sorry, Steve, Steve mentions that, uh, the new lifestyle is great for volunteering. Um, it is, it is great for volunteering. So as you, as you move away from your day-to-day -day life and 
and what has been your your career, it does make room for volunteering. And there are organizations are are dying for volunteers. They need your expertise. You've got skills that you can share, um, and they would they would love to have you. So definitely look into that. It's a great idea, Steve. There's also places where you can volunteer in other countries. There are websites set up for that. So if you want to combine traveling with volunteering, uh, most of them, you basically, you, you got to pay for your food and shelter. But in uh, most countries outside of North America and Europe, uh, that's incredibly cheap. So, um, you know, there's lots of cool stuff you can do when you retire. Um, so Josh mentions that most advisors recommend 80% of what you're living on now, assuming your home is paid for. Um, and that 80%, the other 20% comes from the fact that you're, you're setting aside some money in savings today, hopefully. Um, and uh, you won't necessarily be, be doing that after, after you retire. Um, and, and then Steve replied to that something about the 4% rule. And I don't know what that is. Do you know what the 4% rule is, Carl? No. Well, Steve Kazan, please tell us about this 4% rule. Oh, I would love to know about it. Deplete your IRA or savings at no more than 4% per year. Oh, yeah, I would, I would totally ignore that rule, but then I'm not a financial advisor. Deplete your savings at 4% per year. Is that what it basically was? Yeah, it's spend four percent of your holdings. Okay, I'm a pickleball. So. <laughs> Somebody mentions pickleball, and uh, pickleball is the new shuffleboard. <laughs> um, people love pickleball, and I've never played it. I didn't even know what it was. Strangely to me, they play it year-round outside in Michigan. I was cross-country skiing on a um, on a golf course, actually, at a club, and we went by an area and I heard all this noise and you could peer through the trees and I saw people playing pickleball. I was shocked. Um, but I guess, you know, they're moving around and keeping warm. Um, from what I can tell, it's sort of like, sort of like tennis, like platform tennis, maybe if you're familiar with that, only they don't really, they don't move as much as you'd think. They're just playing in the upper, the upper quarters, right? With four people one person standing in each quarter. So they're sort of able to, to reach the ball from all over. You don't have to run around. You don't have to run as much. Yeah. But, um, and looks like Larry's going to take up fly fishing, which is awesome. So there are many kinds of fishing. You don't have to, you can pick from the type of fishing that you like. I love to go fishing, Larry. So if you want to take me fishing, I'm in. Um, Steve suggests being a fractional CIO. Um, and we talked about um, these non small nonprofits in your area that need your help. <laughs> That's probably an area that they don't know they need your help in. Like you would have sold that to them, but you can also give it to them in your retirement. Um, well, what I've seen from nonprofits and having some of them as clients, they really, really need help in the in the uh, security security area for sure, and understanding their responsibilities. So um, even if they have IT people, they may not understand what their responsibilities are because their passion is not IT. Their passion is whatever the organization is, is uh, doing as yeah. its mission. Another good one I put in the chat is SCORE, which is the Small Business Administration. They love to have retired business people come in and help new business owners. And basically, even if you don't think you have the ability to teach somebody about business, if you've been running a business for 20 or 30 years, you know a whole lot of practical knowledge and uh, that's exactly what they need, right? So that's a good opportunity. Yeah, I know a couple of people that do, that do score and um, they really love it because you're dealing with folks that um, are in that place of starting a business where they're super passionate about something and their passion sort of rubs off on you and, um, you know, gives you that sort of, you know, warm feeling that you're helping other folks get, get started out. Um, Plus it's social. Yeah. Yep. It's social. It's scheduled, right? So it also fulfills that, you know, 
need to have some structure in our lives. Um, there was a there was another another comment in here. You mentioned it earlier about reaching out to old friends. Um, I don't know. You know, as we go through life, um, our our interests change. Our you know, rarely do you have a friend that goes through your whole life. Occasionally, somebody does, but mostly friends sort of come and go as as you go through different different phases in your life. So. Yes, you can reach out to to some old friends, but don't be surprised if they're not the same people that you used to know, you know, because you're not the same peer person that they used to know either. Um, so I would, you know, make a definitely make a concerted effort to to obtain obtain new friends and new acquaintances. I see um, many, many, many groups of mainly men um, at any donut shop, coffee shop, right? They get together and just sit around and chat. And um, they have a good, they have a good time, you know, and um, that's a, that's a thing, thing that many people miss about work life is just having those, those kinds of casual friends too. So uh, Amy, earlier, uh, you had mentioned before this webinar about the, uh, the donut shop gathering. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's actually the Starbucks gathering is what I think you're thinking of. So well, for me, it's um, always donut shops. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm when I'm working, um, especially when I'm writing, I like to have lots of chaos around me, which is some people need absolute quiet, and you know that helps them concentrate. For me. The distractions around me help me concentrate because it forces my brain to tune everything out and deal with the task at hand. Um, and I, I would see at Starbucks, um, Starbucks is a noisy environment, right? So it kind of fills that, some of its white noise and some of its conversation, it just sort of all blends. But there would be this, this group of, of old guys and sometimes one or two women in the group and um, I saw them over there. So I just, there was a seat. I just sat myself down in them, right? I just joined their group and, um, you know, they got used to me, me being there and we didn't talk a lot because I was, I was working, but every once in a while I would, I would say something, but they were a fun group of people to, to actually be in. And um, <laughs> they would, they would buy t-shirts to express their political opinions. And one time I was there and they had all brought in beer to sit around and drink at Starbucks. So I don't know how the manager at Starbucks felt about it, but they they were drinking their beers at, at the Starbucks. And so there's all kinds of little social activities and they're very casual. Many times people are just willing to let you show up, right? And say, you know, hey, do you mind if I sit here with you guys and chat? They probably don't. Well, I I think my entire life I've known a group of old men and occasionally, as Steve mentions, women who go to the local coffee shop and that's their thing from like usually like 8 to 10 a.m. every day. But it is a, you know, this is a social thing. Um, and in some cases, it's people who uh, didn't know each other before. The other thing I'm going to put in the chat, if you haven't checked out meetup.com, now we run the local Sacramento SMBIT uh, professional user group through meetup.com. Uh, but this is a great place to find people who hike or fish or speak or sell things or want to do photography or anything you can possibly imagine. There's a lot of groups there that are just, um, you know, they start out as uh, uh, getting together for social events and happy hours. Uh, I have a group that I've done a friends giving with now for several years that started out as just a meetup group uh, for happy hour. And then it morphed into doing other events. And uh, now one of those events is uh, getting together for Thanksgiving. Hey, Carl, so, when we were in Australia, I needed somebody to watch my cat and dog. And um, the woman that we hired to do it was 68 years old. And um, she, uh, it's what she does now. So she came and lived at my house and 
took care of the, the cat and dog. And then she also had others that she stopped in and, and fed, um, you know, as, or let out as people are, are working. But it's a nice little job. She said, oh, it's just, you know, she really likes animals and um, she really likes talking to people that travel because she traveled a lot in her life as well. Um, and so, you know, when she came over to meet everybody, we sat around and talked about travels for quite a while. Then we got, you know, she was, she was WhatsApping me all along the way and I was sending her photos of what we were doing and, you know, she was very excited. So, um, you know, that's just another opportunity, another way that, that people take advantage of that gig, that gig economy that we've got going on today. Uh, we do tech meetups in the San Francisco Bay Area, virtual CIOs and CMOs. Uh, next meeting is holiday, happy hour, great tech conversations, great idea on the meetups. Um, Steve says he has friends who are taking classes at local universities. Um, absolutely. Another another great thing to do. Keep your, keep your brain going. Um, I haven't thought of that about that, but I think it would be fun because you wouldn't have to care about the grade. <laughs> Or showing up for the exam, right? You're you're just there. You're just there for the for the info and to enjoy the experience. You might also teach one of those classes. Uh, we yeah. have a, a like a little thing in Sacramento. It's uh, it's not a college or anything very official, but you know, it's like a, this organization puts on all the, these classes where the classes are like fifty bucks or eighty bucks or something. And um, some goes to the organizer and some goes to the teacher, but it's about, you know, how, how to build your own fishing rod and how to take, you know, photography at night and all kinds of other stuff. And they usually have some associated Facebook page or meetup group or something. So, you know, if you want to share your hobby and teach as well, that's an opportunity. Again, it keeps your brain alive because that stuff about using your brain, it is a use it or lose it sort of thing. And business owners have had their brains be switched on and busy for 30 years. Right? So, yeah. you know, it's really hard to say, oh, I'm going to stop using that brain. That's as, that's as difficult as not going to the office and having your regular routine. Yeah. There's a, there are a lot of groups um, on uh, Facebook. My local um, government actually sponsors several groups. There's a, uh, there's an environmental group, right? They meet in, talk about environmental issues and do environmental activities around the, around the city. Uh, there's also a, um, a mushroom hunters group that the city sponsors. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of a niche thing, but you know, if you're, you know, want to find out what those mushrooms are that you see growing when you're hiking, um, there's a, a women's hiking group that I'm a member of on Facebook. I've been a member of there for a long time thinking that I will join them someday and I never have, but um, I just keep an eye on what they're doing because someday I will. And, um, you know, they're again, just going around in the local area to the, to the parks and, you know, going on a mile or two or three, you know, walk in the woods. That's, uh, that's something that always refreshes my brain and something I've done through my whole life. So doing with other people is something that I intend that I'm going to do someday. So I'm just keeping an eye on that group and reaching out and finding them and just seeing what's going on around you. You're, you're going to be surprised at really everything that's out there, but you have to look for it. Just start looking for it. Keep an eye out. Excellent. Well, thank you, everybody. We really appreciate you being here. Uh, if this was useful, let us know. Um, I believe we're going to get the recording up on YouTube. And if you have ideas for other things that are not necessarily, you know, how to uh, rewire something electronically, <laughs> uh, we would be happy to, to consider who in our group, because we have a great organization, who else might be able to uh, make a presentation on whatever topic you have in mind or something that can help you fulfill the, the whole round uh, element of your life besides the business of owning a business. Yep. So again, one more pitch for NSITSP. They are the hosts of this event. Um, we're doing many, many great member only events. Um, they're really fantastic. Uh, so please join member, take advantage of those things. Um, 
we've got, you know, codes of ethics. We have a lot of legislative material to help you represent yourself and your business, or maybe those nonprofits that you're going to volunteer for. Lots of educational materials that we're getting together. So I want to see you all over there as members. Please join us. And thank you for joining us today, everybody.